I kind of view this as an optional video, but I think it's, a, it's an interesting one. The, uh, I want to show you, give you an indication why the Moss theorem works for negative integers. And uh, now I can't prove that without using the principle of mathematical induction. And uh, showing that would take another you know, good 30 minutes of video time. So um, I think I'll settle for this. I want to show that here's the Moss theorem that if n is negative 1, then z to the minus 1 is r to the minus 1 cis negative 1 times theta. In other words, that uh, this pattern holds when n is a negative 1. Okay, will we settle for that? All right, and so I got some other stuff written here because I've been kind of struggling for a nice way to explain this. And I said, okay, well, let's, let's take a complex number. I'll call it z. z is x plus yi in rectangular form. Now, in polar form, it's r cosine theta plus i sine theta. That's the, the long version. I know I usually use cis theta, but uh, this time I want to write in the, in the longer version. And, and r, incidentally, is the square root of x squared plus y squared. There it is. Okay. So, with that in mind, I said, well, z to the minus 1, we know is 1 divided by z, just from algebra. And so what would it look like? So it's 1 over x plus yi. And to simplify a complex number uh, like this, when I rationalize the denominator, it means multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. So I have x minus yi here, or you know, under x minus yi. We multiply that out. Uh, the numerator is x minus yi. If you follow this out, you'll see you get x squared plus uh, xyi minus xyi, and then minus uh, y squared, i squared. Those terms cancel, and i squared is negative 1, so this changes this to x squared plus y squared. So this multiplication is x squared plus y squared, which conveniently is r squared, isn't it? Okay. So, now, now what are we going to do from here? Uh, I want to kind of sew up this prove this. And um, from my complex number, um, x is r cosine theta. And y is r sine theta. So just going from here to here and comparing, uh, x and y are, uh, are these forms, which looks like uh, conversions in polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. Okay, um, so up here, I've got x minus yi. I'm going to just going to replace x and y with, with this stuff here. And the numerator, I've got r cosine theta, r cosine theta minus y. Uh, I'm sorry, minus y is r sine theta, minus r sine theta. And then I've got measuring unit i. All right, so it's... Um, you know, very similar to this if I multiply the r through there except I have a minus sign. And the denominator is just simply r squared, isn't it? That's r squared. Okay. Now then, um, if you factor the r out, I'm left with cosine theta minus sine theta times i divided by r squared. And the r cancels, leaving r for a denominator. And finally, the cosine of theta, I'm going to use this, uh, these identities here, the simple identities. The cosine of, of minus theta is the same as the cosine of theta. And minus sine minus theta, I'm sorry, uh, sine, uh, I'm sorry, sine minus theta is negative sine theta. Does that work? Yes. Yes, because the cosine is an even function. The input changing signs doesn't alter the output. However, sine is an odd function. Change theta to minus theta, you get a negative sine theta. All right, so this becomes that mess right there. I've got on top, I've got, uh, I'm going to replace it. I have cosine minus theta, and then minus... <laughs> um, all right, so sine theta is, um, hmm, 
Well, okay, here's, I think I, yeah, yeah, minus sine theta is sine negative theta. So this is really a plus, isn't it? Because here's minus sine theta, and that's sine negative theta. Sine negative theta, and it's all divided by r, isn't it? And so um, this is basically CIS negative theta over r, and uh, over r means r is raised to the minus 1 power, and so we've got it. We got it. Z to the minus 1, which is a reciprocal of a complex number Z, is the reciprocal of its length, or, or absolute value, times uh, cosine plus I sine of negative theta. So, so there it is. I hope you were able to follow this, and uh, it, it made it work. And uh, so it's a, a wonderful theorem. So, Okay, well, in the next video, we're going to look at this when it's 1 divided by n, a fraction, which leads to roots or radicals, however you want to look at that.